Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Rudy Potenzone. Welcome to the I2B2 Transmart Foundation Community Meeting for September 2020. This uh, session is being recorded and it will be available on the website within a day or two. Uh, about the website, some of you may have noticed the last day or two we've had a, a couple of problems and uh, you're getting some errors potentially with us, uh, security. Uh, we're working on it. We do have a valid SSL certificate on the website, but for some reason, it's sometimes not recognizing it. Uh, and we are actively working with the vendor to sort this out and hopefully we'll have it fixed within a couple of hours. Uh, if you clear, clear your, uh, your cache, your browser cache, uh, this, this does help, it seems. So um, just if you'd be patient, we'll try to get this resolved quickly. This is the agenda for today, uh, and um, I will turn it over to Diane, who will start with the first item. Diane? Hi, everyone. Um, so I, I just want to give you a quick update on the European Symposium um, that we're um, going to be having um, on November 9th. And so Rudy, you can go to the next slide. Uh, I think, I, as I said last month, this is going to be a virtual symposium. I, I'm afraid we're going to have virtual symposiums for um, the foreseeable future, um, at least from the foundation. Um, it's on November 9th. Um, it's going to be a one day. Instead of our, our normal two day symposium, we did, the planning committee decided on one day. Um, it's going to feature um, uh, the European um, user group has been the group that's been putting together the agenda. Um, and then the foundation, and they're really responsible for the, the content, the majority of the content, um, and, and the foundation will provide uh, logistical um, support. So the next slide is just a one pager, very high level um, draft agenda. And I know um, Ulrich Sachs is on the call. So um, Ulrich, if, if you, you know, let me, let me walk through this, but if you have suggestions as well, please, um, I want you to be able to chime in here. So it's, it's broken, up, broken up into um, a number of four set different sessions. One is use cases. We wanted to focus on a number of use cases, um, particularly focused on Transmart. So we have a wonderful use case from the University of Michigan that uses Transmart uh, to support their, um, uh, their, their uh, kidney um, studies. Becky Stack will do that. And then um, Scott Wages will do the uh, U-BioPrep which is a um, project that was funded a while ago. And he will talk about um, lessons learned and then sustainability and how do, you, how do you really sustain these big funded projects after the funding goes away, which is really important. So we're really recruiting for you know, a couple of additional um, folks to, um, to talk about their work. So we'd love to, um, to have volunteers for that. Um, we will have a sponsor update. There's a number of sponsors that um, really work within the supporting the foundation and also particularly supporting um, the European groups that will um, talk about their companies. And then we'll have this COVID-19 panel, which um, I think everybody, everybody had, everybody's working on COVID-19. And what we wanted to do is we wanted to bring together um, some of the activities that are happening across the, um, the US and, and Europe so we'll, we'll talk about what's happening in the US and we're gonna cover a number of different um, areas, not just one, uh, there's about four different areas that we'll cover and talk about what they're doing and how they're similar and how they're different. Um, and then we also have uh, somebody from Germany and also somebody from Italy that will talk about the, the work that they're doing. Um, Paul Aviak will do uh, a talk on pediatrics. There's a lot happening in the area of of pediatrics, um, unfortunately, the, the, the numbers are, are growing, and so they're trying to really um, do um, analysis around pediatrics. Uh, and then an open, a roundtable open discussion um, about uh, what people think we need to do moving forward. Um, and then the next piece will be uh, an update from the foundation. We'll, we'll talk about the Dell projects and the updates that, we, uh, that we're making around um, those areas, and then the roadmaps. So I know that the um, European community is very, we'll talk about I2B2, but I know Europeans are very keen on um, really understanding um, where we're going with Transmart. So they will be heavily focused on Transmart. So um, Rudy or Ulrich, do you have any other um, comments before we move on? Yeah, hey, um, my mic is open, yeah. 
So I think we should do two important things in the European meeting. The one is that um, people using Transmart should come out of a stealth mode. So we figure that Transmart is used heavily in some projects, but the uh, PIs cannot report about it. So that's what we need, some, some, um, some sign that a Transmart is live and kicking in the projects. It's uh, sometimes difficult to make people to speak up. So if you have a nice system up and running, <laughs> volunteer for talking about it. The second thing uh, is the lesson we learned from last year's meeting in, in Europe. So people really want to know what's in the 2021 model. So what can we expect? Or what is maybe not showtime ready? What will not be uh, ready for use next year? But it's important because uh, we see lots of projects coming up now. Uh, lots of designs being set up now and I want Transmart to be in there and therefore we need information about what's there, uh, how's the community, will it be there in, in 2025 when those uh, projects end. I think that's um, strategically very important now. Great, thank you Rory. Thanks Rory. This is Rudy. Um, just uh, to let you know that we do have a web page, there are a couple on the, the meeting set up. Uh, hopefully it'll, it'll be available um, the website will be back and, and, and running well. Uh, and also, uh, if you have use cases, you can uh, enter there uh, your, your, uh, your ideas for what you would present. So uh, please go to the website and see that. Uh, alternatively, you can email uh, any of us, uh, but especially uh, Ulrich or Diane, uh, if you have um, a, a use case that you'd like to present. Maybe one last sentence to the sure. use case. Yep. I, I like the COVID-19 panel a lot. At first, I was a little bit careful because everything is COVID-19 <laughs> right now. But I think it's important because uh, this is a catalyst showing what's working and what's not working. So I think <clears throat> IDV to Transmit is very, very useful in, in um, collecting data from federated sites um, to show the metadata, which is um, available in order to work on the data. So I think this is a wonderful use case and we should uh, point out what's uh, working better with uh, using I2B to transplant. I think that's a very unique opportunity and the, uh, our German colleague Uli Prokosch uh, will uh, present the uh, German activities. Uh, well, I think Sean knows the project and the, the uh, German side of it, but it's good to talk uh, to discuss about it, what uh, else would be needed to make things easier. Definitely. Great, thank you. Terrific. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ulrich and, um, and Rudy. Um, so that's what, that's what I have. I think, Rudy, I think you're next up for the... So, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so we do have a, a COVID-19 project funded um, by Dell, uh, and this is uh, around Transmart. Um, we are, uh, the foundation is working closely with Axiomatics um, on uh, putting together a, uh, an instance of Transmart um, version 19 uh, that will be available in the cloud in, on AWS uh, and um, available for, for people to, to use and try out. Uh, this is the, the core team working uh, on the project. Um, people from Axiomatics, myself, and uh, uh, Zami Temestin from the Mayo Clinic, who's an infectious disease expert, is uh, advising us uh, as we work through this. Um, what we're, our goal here is to put up a, a public resource that includes um, Transmart, but also loading uh, sets of data uh, that are available and publicly available. And so we're, we're loading data from uh, not only coronavirus, but um, SARS and MERS uh, that we can find uh, largely from, from GEO. And we're also gonna be soliciting contributions from the community. Uh, largely these are uh, RNA-seq data sets that have been made uh, publicly available, um, but also looking for other types of data. Uh, and the uh, idea of this site is to show, uh, to, to put Transmart, uh, make Transmart available. These data sets are, are already loaded uh, and you can look at them and examine do some analysis of them. And then if you're interested, uh, and these uh, look like they're useful in your research, you can then download the data and bring it into your own uh, Transmart sites. Um, Right now, these are the data sets, numbers of data sets that we have loaded. Uh, and uh, as I say, these, uh, a lot of these are expression RNA-seq data uh, and uh, other, other, a few other types. Um, 
and we're putting up a uh, staging server uh, that will have all these available. Hopefully, uh, this will be publicly available within two weeks or so. And uh, once we have that, we will announce it. Um, this just shows, um, hard to see, but uh, that the data sets are all loaded. Uh, these are all transmarked uh, folders within them. Uh, I'll open up one of them uh, dynamic, uh, on the screenshot, and you can see it actually has um, data associated with uh, the different types of information that's there. Some of it's high dimensional data, some of it's about the, the, the um, samples uh, and um, you know, related information. Uh, and this, this hopefully will all be available soon. Now, in, in uh, trying to, to expand what we're doing, uh, we're also planning to hold a, a virtual datathon uh, and we're, we're targeting November 18th to 20th uh, for this. Uh, and this is um, where we're, we're inviting people to, uh, to attend who have interest in using Transmart, uh, maybe uh, you know, data scientists, uh, people working on the viruses, um, maybe have your own data that you want to bring uh, and uh, bring the, the, the group together uh, in this three-day uh, intense um, analysis uh, group where uh, the, uh, the team, there, people will self-organize into teams of about five people and uh, each team will pick their own uh, project, uh, whether it be, uh, here's some ideas about, you know, trying to find new biomarkers or some common pathways, uh, et cetera. Uh, and each team will set themselves a goal on day one. They'll work uh, using, each team will have their own uh, AWS instance of Transmart, all these data sets and some other tools. Uh, as well as potentially some uh, some of our experts uh, available to help uh, use the, the tools that are there uh, as they try to solve a particular problem uh, around uh, COVID-19 uh, that's uh, of their their interest. Um, we do have a, a web page for sign up um, when the web comes back. Uh, we've got a description uh, of uh, the uh, the uh, datathon, what we're hoping for and pulling together. Uh, and uh, there will be, will be some sponsors, uh, ships, and uh, some awards given to the teams that have the best presentation. This is the organizing committee. Uh, we're working with, um, you know, it's obviously, it's a joint with, with Axiomedics, uh, the Mayo Clinic, uh, uh, Zami is working with us, and um, uh, Nebeda de Rath from the uh, Open Science Pharma Foundation, OSPF. Uh, and so we're trying to pull all this together. Uh, as I say, we've got a brochure that we can uh, share with you uh, if you want to have a little bit more information, but uh, the websites uh, will be the best place to go to, uh, to learn more. Um, the project server is going to have Transmark 19, um, and then all of the, the data sets that are here, uh, and um, we'll make it uh, available again, I hopefully within the next two weeks. Uh, and so, you know, happy to answer any questions about it, but um, we're working to, you know, announce uh, all of this, make it all available. You can now sign up uh, on the website, uh, and then we'll be holding uh, training webinars that will uh, go over both uh, Transmart version 19 uh, to show what's available, uh, and also a second webinar, which will go through what the data sets are that we have available, uh, and some of the tools, other tools that we may have. Um, so. We're talking to a number of, of folks to, to provide some additional resources, uh, re, uh, compute capabilities, et cetera. And uh, we'll let you know about that as soon as we have that uh, organized. So that's what I had. Um, and uh, we can answer any questions about it, uh, maybe to, at the end. But now I'm gonna invite uh, Jim Campbell, who the, leads the ontology working group. Jim, did you wanna run the slides yourself? Uh, good morning. Are you hearing me okay? Yes, you sound fine. Yeah, um, may I share my screen? Yeah, I'll stop sharing. You should be able to share. <clears throat> um, it says you disabled participant screen sharing. Okay. You should be able to share now. Sorry about that. There we go. Are you seeing my slide set? Yes, they look fine. Um, I would like to uh, uh, just update the group on a, uh, a proposal that we're working on right now um, for tooling um, in support of I2B2 metadata. For those of you who may not be um, intimately involved with I2B2, um, 
most times uh, people call them ontologies, but basically uh, they are metadata that metadata sets that organize the uh, function of the I2B2 client, uh, specifically supporting um, searching, categorizing, and counting uh, data that's located in the observation facts star schema. <clears throat> the star schema is indexed on two items, concept dimension and modifier dimension, uh, which basically are meant to point to external ontologies, terminologies, metadata systems, um, that help to um, classify and aggregate the uh, facts in the database along um, independent uh, knowledge-based uh, means. So for example, here you see a picture of our recent deployment of uh, Loink Lab uh, results. Um, <clears throat> and in um, this metadata hierarchy that we have deployed, um, you can use the um, folders or you can use the little uh, icons that appear as folders as drag and drop search tools which basically do terminologic aggregation or or subsumption or or identifying all of the concepts that are children of the concept that you choose um, and therein they basically deploy the utilities of the reference terminology or ontology um, into the I2B2 data management scheme. Um, collectors are the topmost nodes, in this case, lab results. Folders are basically <clears throat> concept nodes that um, have children um, and can be searched um, for aggregation. And leaf nodes are basically at the bottom of the hierarchy, if you will, and um, have no descendants. Um, here in Nebraska, we have had lots of difficulties over the years deploying and keeping our I2B2 ontologies up to date and useful. <clears throat> and um, so we, um, within the ontology work group, we've um, embarked upon a project uh, to basically set up tool sets and documentation that would support um, at least the core of standard ONC um, uh, terminology metadata so that uh, for the US uh, participants at least, um, all of the um, ontologies would be supported in a current comprehensive and historic form. Now we're also a PCORnet data mart um, as are most of our colleagues and so in order to try and minimize the amount of duplicate work that we have to do, since those terminologies are also reference knowledge sources um, in manipulation of the PCORnet common data model, um, we set out to basically deploy some tooling that would support both I2B2 and common and uh, CDM. Um, implementation and use of terminologies. Um, and <clears throat> some of the requirements, as I mentioned, are that these need to be comprehensive, meaning that they have to have all of the codes that have been published by the standards development organization. They should, the tool should support a rapid build so that we could make it easy for our sites to stay current with what is otherwise a, you know, a relatively frequent uh, maintenance cycle um, within these uh, standards development organizations. And we want to be able to support, support the full knowledge base features of these terminologies for I2B2, for analytics, um, and for <clears throat> decision support. Um, as a part of this proposal, we're we're uh, suggesting um, a terminology metadata maintenance cycle that basically would um, organize and standardize the way that we distribute <clears throat> terminology to our I2B2 and uh, CDM sites. And it begins with acquiring the terminology updates from the um, SDOs, um, building a set of relationship tables, um, deploying um, 
procedures that will basically build metadata tables from those relationship groups. Uh, populating the I2B2 ontology cell, which is necessary so that it's actually deployed in I2B2. Then fact counting, validating, <clears throat> and also building a master site-specific um, data inventory um, or data dictionary uh, that can be used by the community of use at that site um, to effectively employ the terminology in their query builds. Um, so this uh, proposal basically begins with where we get the terminologies. And <clears throat> over the years, we have had numerous experiments where we have demonstrated that UMLS does not, not publish basically comprehensive and historic um, terminology reference resources with full relationship data that can be used for this type of activity. So we basically turn to the SDOs for the sources. SNOMED CT is released twice yearly in the US by the National Library of Medicine, which is our release center. Um, in Nebraska, we have integrated <clears throat> SNOMED with LOINC and um, RxNorm into a comprehensive um, ontology concept model um, that has been suggested by Keith Campbell and the Solar Group um, so that we can build LOINC and RX Norm ontologies as well. Um, so our SNOMED CT is basically the platform, if you will, on which we build um, an integrated complex ontology uh, for US um, healthcare. LOINC is published twice a year by Reagan Street Institute. It's a flat file with no ontologic features of substance. Um, basically, in our build, um, we do deploy a full ontology of LOINC. RxNorm is published monthly by the um, National Library of Medicine. One of our staff, uh, co author on this presentation, Jay Pedersen, has spent a lot of time building APIs to NLM RX nav site uh, to basically grab current and historical RX norm data. And we have worked with the FDA archives to basically build a history file for NDC codes. And of course, ICD 10 CM is published by NCHS, um, comes out up with updates in October. Um, we use the XML release from the uh, Center for Disease Control. In this process, those sources are built into relationship tables by a set of procedures which uh, run very quickly and basically harvest all of the um, relationship information that uh, we can um, that we can manage from um, these references. And they are built into a relationship table for each um, uh, terminology resource. So SNOMED, LOINC, RxNorm, um, and ICD-10-CM at this time. Those relationship tables um, basically organize into SQL format um, the data that is useful from those terminologies in terms of relaying the ontologic framework, if you will, allowing us to build metadata, um, um, onto, uh, metadata ontologies for I2B2. Now in ICD-10-CM, that's very simple. Um, a supertype concept such as asthma, J45, is related to all of its children, grandchildren, et cetera, uh, such as J45.3 mild persistent asthma. Rx norm is much more complicated because of the fact that Rx norm is not an ontology um, and has never been intended to be one. But over the past three to four years, we have worked uh, with Jeff Klan and Michelle Morris and others to basically identify the important relationships from. Um, the Rx norm tables. Um, and what we deploy right now in our tables for medications include ingredient to clinical drugs. So 
uh, what are the active ingredients in this clinical drug? What are the active ingredients that are found in this particular package code? Uh, what are the clinical drugs that may be found in this package code? And then finally, we have deployed classes. So all of the VA um, drug classes, um, as well as some from ATC and a number of others that we have built for pragmatic use cases, are basically defined based upon their ingredients and their dose forms. So for example, the VA drug class for topical ophthalmic myotics basically consists of those with ingredient of acetylcholine that have a dose form like ophthalmic. SNOMED CT um, is a robust ontology, has lots of relationships that we do not harvest in their entirety but we do use the ISA relationships, which basically build uh, the hierarchical structures of all of the major uh, SNOMED um, hierarchies. And finally, LOINC, uh, based upon our build following the SOLOR model, uh, we have a true ontology of LOINC, um, laboratory and clinical. Uh, here you see an example which relates um, the uh, observation result of eosinophils in sputum by manual method to a parent eosinophils in sputum. Um, we pub published a paper five years ago. Um, I noticed that Hubert Hickman is on the call. He and Jay are, are co-authors on this, where we explained how such tables, which we call transitive closure tables, can be deployed um, in I2B2 to support actually more efficient and rapid searching of um, very large databases. So those relationship tables are in turn used in the I2B2 metadata construction. And here you see an example where there's a folder search for asthma um, in SNOMED CT conditions. Um, and in the metadata table, we have changed the uh, like um, operator to equals and are basically searching for subtype codes where the supertype concept happens to be asthma. Um, and, um, and in that way, we have used basically the tooling that is, has been present in I2B2 since its inception. Um, but in a slightly different fashion in terms of deploying these terminologies um, in terms of I2B2 metadata. One of the points I made early on, however, is that these data, these tables um, can support not only terminology management in I2B2, but also the common data model, where here, for example, uh, we're basically looking for conditions of asthma um, in a uh, SQL deployment um, using the PCORnet common data model, identifying those that are available with a modifier code of chief complaint, medical history, or problem list. So um, in terms of where the project is today, uh, we have deployed, tested, um, and, um, and are actually using reference terminology uh, metadata sets uh, for I2B2 for these four major domains. Um, and we're proposing that um, we would basically um, support these for the I2B2 community at large. An important additional step, which is often overlooked in using I2B2 metadata, especially for observational data, is the importance of supporting query by value. And that requires a feature of the metadata called metadata XML. And I apologize for not explaining that in more detail right now, but it's out of scope. Suffice it to say that we have a metadata XML um, library that we have built at Nebraska that we uh, are deploying within our laboratory and clinical uh, data set, uh, metadata sets, so that um, 
this query by value in I2B2 can be supported. Um, now these procedures do all of the work of getting metadata to work in I2B2. So they build the metadata after the relationship tables are available. Um, then they populate the CRC and ontology cells um, creating concept dimension and modifier dimension and employ new modifier based fact coding, a uh, fact counting, which um, our uh, colleague Jay Pedersen has developed. Modifier based fact counting basically applies the modifiers that are relevant to a particular metadata hierarchy. Um, when it employs the, the, the fact counting itself so that, for example, in SNOMED CT, if you're looking for problem list, you don't want to be counting those instances uh, where the SNOMED code happens to be deployed in family history. Um, and uh, speaking with Jeff Klan a week or two ago, um, he told me that he didn't know of anybody that had, had implemented this um, I just mention it as one feature of the tooling that we are proposing. So the metadata li XML library right now amounts to about 1,255 codes. Um, we have something under 3,000 link codes deployed in our database today. Um, so we've got a ways to go in terms of supporting query by value for everything that, that we currently use, but um, you know, we've got a pretty good start on that, basically. The four metadata tables, um, I just want to highlight briefly. Um, SNOMED CT um, basically employs the hierarchies of clinical findings, events, and situations, and supports SNOMED coded problem list, past medical history, chief complaint, allergy reaction codes and family history. And since it's SNOMED CT, it's not surprising that it's large. Um, as a part of our metadata procedures, all of our metadata is built with uh, provenance nodes so that if you go into I2B2 and, and reveal hidden terms, You'll find the information about when this extract was, was done and when the um, um, uh, terminology publication uh, was released. Um, something that, you know, is not easy to do right now in I2B2 today. LOIC metadata, um, as I mentioned, is based upon an integrated ontology concept model. Um, including SNOMED and our RX norm. Um, at Nebraska, we have been doing a lot of research work on cancer medicine. And so um, it includes anatomic and molecular pathology. Um, all clinical lab tests that are currently in use, as far as we can determine, in the US, um, a number of popular panel codes and tumor observables. And out of the 65,000 uh, uh, LOINC concepts, there are 32,000 or so um, in this um, ontology today. Um, and the ontology build basically is built on the skeleton of the ISA relationships, um, but we have a full ontologic model, which means it's possible to query LOINC databases um, based upon the metadata alone, um, if you wish to do that. RxNorm um, and NDC um, basically employs ingredients, clinical drugs, which are these five um, RxQE TTYs, NDC package codes, and drug classes. And you can see that um, there's a large number of package codes that are available. I can tell you that a big fraction of them are no longer in use in the US healthcare system, but we all have these codes in our databases. And, and so that's why we've been insisting on absolute um, historicity in terms of the build of these metadata tables. 
Um, and you see below the inventory of the number of relationships um, that are employed in uh, building um, these tables. ICD-10-CM is pretty standard. Um, we're updated right now with the uh, 2021 release um, that is due for October of 2020. Um, has about 110,000 concepts right now um, and is a strict mono hierarchy. Now, some of the lessons we've learned at Nebraska um, about using I metadata in I2B is it's complicated to install. It's also frequently error prone. So we're including a validation step that would basically run a set of predetermined SQLs um, on the uh, database once a site um, has deployed their data um, and compare that against the fact counting for validation. We've also found that understanding how to use the terminology at your site is frequently a difficulty. Now, some recent change improvements in I2B2 make it easier to search for terminology in I2B2 but it has never been facile, I think it's fair to say. Um, in addition, every time we roll out a new um, cycle, and we do it for PCORNet at least uh, quarterly, um, the community of use has the challenge of knowing what is in the database and what they can actually use from these gigantic ontologies. So we've included a semantic data inventory tool that builds a terminology master table, which is a site-specific um, inventory of standard coding, coded terminology that's deployed at the site. And it's indexed by a lot more terms and keywords so that it's easier to look up um, concepts um, review their frequency in your database by semantic type, data frequency, and where it came from in the electronic health record. And we've supplemented this at Nebraska um, with, some with our terminology reference tables so that when um, this user who's researching a project on smoking um, looks through what's available in the in Nebraska um, medicine uh, data mart um, by semantic type, they see that they've got prescription drugs that are used for smoking cessation. They see they've got counseling events. Um, they see they've got clinical problem list of, of data um, and the like. Um, and if they want to happen to research for example, the utility of this bupropion um, oral tablet for a smoking cessation, they can basically use the uh, hypertext link that you see right there um, and go and get a list of package codes and the ingredient code that are available, that are um, actually deployed in our database uh, for that particular clinical drug. So um, the proposal to the ontology work group right now is that um, we think these procedures would have benefit to the wider community. We'd like to deploy documentation of the metadata deployment procedures to our ontology wiki, um, move to GitHub the table builds, um, including the relationship tables and the metadata tables. Um, and we're also suggesting that, um, that we would maintain timestamp terminology reference releases in GitHub that can allow the I2B2 community to always look back and see, well, what was the status of such and such a concept in RxNorm or SNOMED CT in you know, July of 2020? Um, so that's the proposal as it stands right now. Um, some of the features that you know, these procedures would add for the site that wants to actually use the build process would be that they would actually install and validate and fact count 
the, um, the uh, metadata when it is built. Uh, whereas the current procedures that are widely practiced are basically sharing a CSV file that then the user community basically has to deploy. Um, so that's the extent of what I uh, wanted to um, share and I will stop talking now. Rudy? Thanks, Jim. Um, we can uh, open up now for questions uh, for Jim. Uh, I think anyone can unmute themselves and ask a question. Sean, I noticed you were unmuting. Yes, I want to make sure that there weren't other, maybe more relevant questions, but let me just, uh, in terms, Jim, of um, follow-up steps with um, putting it on a GitHub and um, making the, the CSV tables available. Um, you know, one of the things we've always kind of lacked in I2B2 is a central uh, coordinating center, um, which this would be a very appropriate uh, part of. Um, and, you know, that kind of maintenance, you know, might be something that would take um, some funding. And I noticed that um, we have some of our uh, uh, most heavily invested uh, folks, perhaps from industry on the call. Uh, I see Dave Diamond, I see Chi Lee. Um, and so thinking, and maybe Diane, you, you might want to reflect on this and, 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 and Rudy, in terms of, I mean, is there a way that we could perhaps position a kind of you know, I2B2 Transmart Coordinating Center, uh, because that would allow us to, um, you know, make sure that Jim's vision is, and, and I should say, without this vision that Jim has, you know, it's very difficult for sites to kind of do these things on their own. And, um, and it's very critical for the operation of I2B2 and Transmart, but yet, um, you know, there's so many folks, right? We have like 300 sites using I2B2 and Transmart, all kind of doing what they can. Um, so, um, you know, Jim and, and, and Jay, both, you know, I know that you, you started this uh, about three years ago or more. It's really, you know, shown tremendous uh, benefit to the, to the community. And, 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 you know, these tables are kind of, you know, some of the goals that we have, um, you know, to operate. The community so uh, I don't know what just in terms of an open discussion about you know how that might you know be realized and I think that's um I mean it's a really good point you know how, how do you get your arms around funding for something like that um I know um Matthew from Trinetics is also a, a pretty active um, participant in the ontology working group so you know Trinetics you know, might might also be a uh, a career in um, in trying to support this since they're they're you know wrestling with this them, themselves. So something we should definitely um you know talk about. I do I do invite people to join the ontology working group. Um, it, it's become a probably one of the most active working groups um, at, at this point. And um, you know, if you want to join, you can. There's a sign-up sheet on the website, or you know, anybody can just email me directly as well. Uh, and one of the things we're trying to do about with the working groups, if, if you don't want to become a regular member, um, we're going to be adding information about the meetings just directly on the website. So with the with the Zoom information, so if you just want to you know, drop into a meeting once in a while, that's totally fine too. You don't have to go through the process of um, signing up and becoming a permanent member. Absolutely. You know, I also noticed Michelle's on the call and Michelle's done a tremendous amount of um, not only, you know, building these kinds of ontologies, but also distributing them with a, with a GitHub. Um, I'm wondering, you know, how we can maybe put that together. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I, you know, it's like, okay, so of all these things, what's the, what's the first thing that seems like we need? And that is, okay, establishing a GitHub that makes sense for where people can go, right? And I know Michelle runs the one for the ACT ontology, 
And obviously, um, you know, these are hand in hand uh, activities. And I kind of even see different tiers of ontologies where, um, you know, you can have a super basic ontology, something we've never even considered, I think, but, but something that I find might be helpful for some of our users where, you know, it just has the most basic um, uh, diagnosis codes and so forth. And, you know, the scientists and clinicians that use that, a lot of times they're not informaticians. They don't even know what the medical record is. They just want to like, you know, find some patients that they can, uh, you know, either get samples for and, you know, so forth. So, um, or, or do some data mining, you know, and they've got some people on their team. So I, I think that, um, you know, it just, a, you know, you can have a, a, think of a tier of a super kind of basic ontology that's even less than anything we have currently it has kind of the top layers of the hierarchies only. And then the second would be something more fluid and, 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 and that we're using in ACT, for example, that um, has a lot of the kind of basic constructs in it. Um, and then, you know, what Jim's done and Jay uh, is really some absolutely uh, uh, fundamental, I mean, you know, to, to, to the point that, um, you know, we can actually think of this as a true informatics kind of uh, venture far beyond even what's in UMLS. As, because, you know, without these historic terms, you know, it, it, you can't do real queries in historic data warehouses, which is what we all have, or what many of us have. So, you know, having this, and I think that, you know, having this on the same GitHub, Michelle, as um, uh, ACT, you know, could enable like you to kind of take a, a cut of that and then maybe cut up into the, the, the more, you know, uh, basic ones that, that, you know, folks might. Anyway, what's the, I don't know, I'm just kind of uh, thanks for those comments, Sean. I, I would reflect that, you know, when we first started the discussion in the ontology work group of the scope of what we should be supporting, um, you know, we're very parochial in the U.S. Um, and our ICD-10 CM deployment, you know, we call it ICD-10, but it isn't. <laughs> it's actually it's actually a derivative of something that is um, in use worldwide, which is ICD-10. Um, and, you know, we explored with those me members who um, had interests in Europe um, as to what ontologies they would like to see supported. But we never got a lot of traction in that discussion. And I would hope that maybe this today um, points to the need to, uh, you know, developing this more global view of how we should ma be managing these ontologies. Because no question, here at Nebraska, we're going to support our own user community, but we basically want to work with and interoperate with, um, you know, our colleagues in Europe and across the world. And, and let me just ask Ulrich, so even in the medication codes, is there, there's a separate coding system called AT... S maybe? ATC, yeah. ATC, thank you. Um, so I, I see a, a lot of overlap. So uh, right now I'm preparing a talk for the SNOMED CT Expo, where we talk about the uh, German SNOMED CT license. Finally, <laughs> we got something, yeah, which is not really, but uh, not the whole license nationwide. But we're thinking about some governance processes, and I like the talk um, between Loink and Snowmid City a lot. We're facing similar problems, similar challenges. For example, expressing a COVID-19 uh, result for, from um, virology, which you cannot express in Loink, but you have to map it to Snowmid City. And so, I think we're pretty much on the same line here. Just the, uh, and we would like to learn um, about the governance processes because I think that's the difficult thing. Coming up with Excel sheets and some nice uh, value sets is not the problem, but how to you know, finalize them, and how to get them on the road. I mean, I, I guess it's, it's a problem, but the smart, bright people on the call have solved a lot of that, including you, you Ulrich, including uh, you know, Jim and Michelle and so forth. And now the question is about coordination 
Well, that's why the thinking of a kind of coordinating effort. I the one that and uh, uh, so just, uh, I have uh, had some experience before, and uh, as Sean know, that many years ago at uh, Partners Healthcare, uh, we used to have a committee uh, in, uh, called the CCC and the uh, Content Curation, Critical Content Committee. Uh, uh, it, there, it is a uh, very important aspect of it where uh, the, the content is actually uh, very important for not only clinical decision support, but also for uh, the population health reportings and uh, so at, um, uh, at that time, there were tools uh, to facilitate these decision-making. Uh, now I'm showing some uh, kind of uh, age here by talking about Documentum. And uh, as you know, they change hands many times. And uh, of course, uh, whether the product's still there, we don't know, but uh, uh, there's definitely content uh, uh, decision sort of uh, making tools uh, that can help to uh, facilitate that curation process. And um, uh, secondly is I think, uh, there are uh, specialty more of an ontology company out there uh, that if they could participate into the uh, into the, the let's say the uh, broader ITB2 uh, the foundation uh, community and I think uh, they could also offer up uh, some versions of their content curation tools and uh, as a contribution to the community that will get you at least uh, some industrial strength tools uh, that you can work with and as a baseline. And uh, also I was, uh, I was quite interested in, uh, we have been looking at, for example, a VSAT, a value set uh, uh, that was authored and managed by the government. And uh, of course it's a very US centric, uh, but uh, the information is organized, the way it's searched, uh, it was actually quite helpful. It obeyed that it is mostly for quality reporting, uh, but the disease definition combining multiple codes and this and that, that's a commonly uh, ask for use case and uh, it is a fairly good way to organize them though. So, but that came from the VSAC uh, aspects of it. And uh, lastly, I would say that uh, uh, for, I think uh, uh, for, for us, uh, even from a system point of view, it is also difficult to have the, uh, I think uh, to have a, a content maintenance uh, as a ask for anybody. I mean, it is a special, a set of skills and new processes. And uh, even if we package as a product offering, I was thinking if we have a product centric view, uh, which for example, focus on the COVID-19, uh, that actually could help with some of the focus regarding what content needs to be, uh, or ontology related uh, content needs to be managed. Uh, that will help us to, to maybe minimize the scope a little bit. At least we have a starter set that has a common interest among the a group of uh, uh, researchers out there. Yeah, those are great, great thoughts. Actually. I mean, you know, it seems um, like, uh, you, you know, we, we could even just progress in, a, in, in some stages getting, you know, this work on, you know, a central kind of or a coordinated GitHub. I, I, you know, when you mentioned, by the way, companies uh, managing ontologies, Massey, yeah. <laughs> that's a little bit of a, I mean, in the, you, you, uh, that's, a, that's quite a great, you know, job they do. Anyway, so, um, so I just think that, uh, you know, yeah, so th th this would be, this would be a nice thing to develop um, and, and necessary and um, it's great work. All right. A quick comment, I just uh, posted on the chat, it, it's Germanized, so it's not, uh, might be translated um, in the article set. So um, we, yeah, it is, there's a translation for the second link. Uh, this is our collection on uh, COVID-19 data sets, um, including several um, <laughs> different uh, data sets. And it's a combination of long uh, SNOMED CT uh, because we realized one ontology yeah, it has to comprise uh, different terminologies. And that's uh, what we use um, for balloting HL7 style. Uh, and get the input from the, um, the domain experts in order to come up with the data set. But it's very difficult and it's ongoing since month right now. So it's evolving. So now it's called Gecko Plus because the first version was not good enough. You see, yeah, it's, it's um, I apologize. <laughs> but I think the flag in the right upper corner might translate some of the content. Uh, and this helps us discussing a lot be because people can click in 
uh, and uh, see what we thought about uh, what the domain experts br uh, brought in. And we have a, a German basic data set uh, containing different modules and module by module they're balloted in, in HL7. It's, uh, yeah, here you see the, even the translation, it's important for us because we want to reach out in um, Europe as well. So you see some ICD-10 mapping on the CT terms for the most important concepts. It's a big effort. Yeah. Yeah, that's very nice. Um, I could, what I could do, I, we got a working group on interoperability. Um, I could bring up the topic and try to um, pull in some of those people <laughs> which are already, uh, you know, active worldwide um, into this ontology working group. I cannot promise anything because those people are really busy. Uh, I think it would be worth. If, if we're not presenting this already, this would be a great thing to present at the community, at the European meeting. Yeah, actually, I was going to suggest to Ulrich that um, if they are interested, um, I think that um, talking briefly about where we have been going with ontology development and standardization um, and um, soliciting uh, European involvement um, in, in the work group would uh, be, uh, I think, a great idea. Yeah, I will reach out to uh, Sylvia Toon. That's the one uh, yeah, being most active and socially accepted in the community. And she's, a, she's really a very good multiplier. And maybe you know her, so. Mm -hmm. I, I think Sean's um, suggestion of getting a, an ontology um, session on the European, um, the European Symposium is, is absolutely right on, so. Yeah, yeah. She'd, be, she'd be great, I think. Yeah. That's that's just I think that's the, the perfect uh, addition to that um, that meeting. Thank you, Sean. Well, this is um th th this is really fantastic, Jim. I, I really appreciate you you coming and spending the time here. I, I really do think we need to broaden the um, ontology working group and and really start to focus on some of these things. Um, and certainly looking at an international um, focus is is going to be important. I know we're a little bit over. Any other last minute um, questions here? The group? If not, I know everybody's jumping to either lunchtime or another Zoom meeting, or if you're in Europe, probably the end of your day. So, all right. Thank you, everyone. See you next month.